Alrighty everybody, I am back with a quick review on the Craftsman um, wood planer here and I just wanted to do an update on cleaning. I did order new parts in for this under warranty but I am still waiting on Craftsman to send them out and it's been over two weeks now. So I got jobs to do and I cannot wait on them anymore and uh, it's time to do a detailed cleaning on this thing. Now what issue I ran into is the uh, the rollers and the blade get gummed up this right here will happen with um, as you can see how thickly built up that is this will happen with uh, any type of uh, reclaimed wood or anything that you're trying to process if it's uh, if it's not already like store-bought and you're just planting it down just to freshen it up if you're using or if you're running reclaimed wood through this you want to make sure that you clean that stuff up um, I get, as you can see here, a nice thick buildup of gummed up paint on the blade, as well as um, burned sawdust on the rollers, which I have already, uh, for the most part, cleaned off, but you can see where there's little nicks and things on them. Sorry about the video being blurry. Uh, they were really, really bad off, um, black, and just really gummed up. And uh, I did find some, doing some research, I did find some uh, cleaning solution that will actually break this stuff off pretty quickly um, if you're willing to put a little bit of elbow grease into it. Need I say or advise, be very, very careful when you're doing this. Um, I do not recommend uh, any form of having the machine powered on or plugged in when you're using this, just as a disclaimer um do not do that so what i uh what i do is if i need to get to the other side i remove everything away from the machine and then i plug it in and power it up just so it rolls over to the next side that i need to work on then it gets unplugged or powered off and unplugged and that's what i do to get to the next portion of it but do not put your hands in this um machine well it's plugged in you could accidentally bump the power buttons very easy to do it's right here on the front uh, you have to pull up on these but even still if your shirt pocket or anything gets stuck on that or your your glasses or whatever you know how these accidents tend to happen um, it could power that on you don't want to be under there with those blades you get lacerations and things from this it's not going to sew up so it'll just uh It'll just rip right through whatever you get stuck in it. It's a very powerful machine. It will pull things into it. Just don't do it. It's a whole round bad idea. Um, if you got a bad feeling about it, trust your gut. And uh, anyways, let's get down to it. What I had or the uh, tools I'm using for cleaning this. Scraper blade. You can get these from Dollar General, Dollar Store, whatever. Um, Walmart. Basically, there's a lot of places to carry them. This is a nice one because it doesn't cut from the side. It cuts straight on like you can kind of scoop into it so you're not gouging. Um, that does help remove a lot of the surface layer that's up here um, on the top portion here without cutting into the metal. Uh, so that's kind of a, a good tool to have. Just don't just be sure to go very lightly with these because you can scratch into the metal. Do not use this on the rubber. Um, I know I shouldn't have to say that, but uh, uh, there are some people out there. So avoid doing that. Anyways, um, your next two products that you're going to need is um, you can use rubbing alcohol like this. It's not going to be the like, I mean, it'll work to clean the rubber off. Um, but it's going to take you a little while with some elbow grease. What I found, mix it with some basic household cleaning ammonia. Now, credit, or, uh, granite disclaimer, if this has any type of reaction or you are used to or not used to strong chemicals or anything, not on me. It is completely entirely up to you guys. If you do happen to do a mix of this, do a 50-50 mix in a spray bottle. Um, what I've been doing is literally just dumping it on small portions onto the cloth and rubbing it on the rubber rollers to clean them off. 
Um, so what you want to do when you're cleaning it off is pull the thing all the way up. If you don't take the rollers off, just uh, pull your notch all the way up. As you can see, mine is not all the way up because I'm actually cleaning the blades right now. And basically, you just kind of want to get under there. Always watch where your fingers are at. Don't get, don't try to be too quick with it or too aggressive um, in the sense that you accidentally make your hand slip and go into that blade. Because even if the blade is off, if you're rubbing back and forth like this to clean the rollers with your cloth and your hand slips while you're rubbing back and forth, you're going to lacerate your hand pretty good. That's uh, These blades are very, very, very sharp. So, with that being said, um, let's get into it. I will show you how well it does clean. We're also going to be cleaning the outfeed. I never use a shop vac or anything with this, um, just because I use mine outside. But you can see all that stuff is all thick, and uh, it's pretty hard stuck on there. Like, it doesn't want to come off very easy. So that's what we're going to be doing is using the scraper to get the thick stuff off and using the chemical to kind of just break up the little stuff and get that off. Uh, the reason why I started doing this is that mine no longer, um, it no longer wants to pull the wood into it and I'm assuming that's because the rubber grips are not finding the surface of the wood. Uh, I think what's going on is all of the um, dried up portions that you're seeing here like all this big crusty stuff is actually getting in the way and it's causing those rubber grips not to want to grab that wood and pull it in um, when it does pull it in it does not want to cut it i think that's because of the gum buildup that's in the blades so we're going to try to get that stuff cleared out and see what happens with it uh, just to try to save you some money if you don't happen to have these under warranty or if, like in my situation, you call in the warranty and it takes them forever to get the product to you with uh, no tracking information on it. Um, so, this is the first time I've ever had a negative with Craftsman products for getting stuff. Usually they're pretty good at getting me um, products out when I order them in or when it's warrantied, but for whatever reason with this particular machine, it is taking them a long time to get stuff to me. And I'm probably going to have to call them back again and, and escalate to a supervisor because I don't think the last person I talked to um, was understanding me very well. And I think he might have got my address mixed up. So, granted, uh, what we are also going to do, I run reclaimed wood through this, so sometimes it, it has a little, uh, a little uh, staple or something through it. Um, Sometimes I miss something, as you can see on the board here, it's kind of scratched up. That'll blunt your blades, so you don't want to do that. Always want to double check. For me, it's hard to see a lot of that stuff, and I usually get about 98% of the screws and staples and things out of the wood before I run it through, but it's still very dangerous if you miss anything. As you can see from the uh, steel plate here, it'll scratch right through everything. And it could shoot that stuff off, so just don't sit on the back end of it if it uh, if you are running reclaimed wood. Um, so I'm going to get that, uh, I'm going to put a beeswax on that and get it polished down again and just smooth where you can literally just try to flick the wood across it and get it to slide. And that should, uh, for some reason that tends to work for people to get the wood to go through easier. If I have to do that like every month or so, I'm fine with that um, for maintenance reasons. But uh, it's just getting to the point where I've been running this thing for a very long time. And uh, I've, I've processed a lot of wood through it. And this is the first really detailed cleaning that I will be doing with it. So with that being said, I'm going to get it cleaned up. And I will show you guys what it looks like after the cleaning. And we will see if it works. Alrighty, everybody. Sorry about the jump there. So I just wanted to show you guys what it looks like when it's cleaned up, and I will let you know if it's working. But I did get a lot of that gunk out of the blade section, as you can see. Not all of it, but I did get a good portion. I got a lot of the chunky stuff that was back there out. You should always be wearing gloves when you're doing this, but you know. Just trying to do this for 
reasons for allowing you guys to see. There's still some stuff that's on there, um, but I don't think it's going to affect it. It's just not thick enough on there. And obviously it's uh, it's getting time for me to get new blades for this. Um, these are standard issue for craftsmen. They're non-reversible. So it's uh, getting time to get some new blades for those. Anyways, uh, I did put a wax job on this. I used beeswax. Um, very old stuff that I got for free. And uh, it seems to do pretty good. See? Allows that stuff to slide on there freely. So that's what you want it to do. You don't want it to stick. I just used um, this stuff here. Feed and wax wood preserver. Um, it's basically beeswax and orange oil, so it has a nice smell to it. And uh, it's not really practical to use on metal surfaces, so I don't know how long it's going to last. But hey, uh, that's what I have. So um, let me get this thing buttoned up and I will let you guys know if it is uh, cutting. Uh, just a friendly note. Um, this is the top portion, which is uh, what keeps the dust going down into it. Anyways, uh, you can kind of see how it fits on there. Um, yeah, so it just goes on top like that. Anyways, this gets a very thick, very hard buildup on it too. So when you clean it off um, to get keep that from happening, you can go ahead and throw a wax on this and it'll keep that uh, dust from sticking and just allow it to shoot off the way it's supposed to. Uh, the reason why I had such a buildup on it is because I actually ran um, reclaimed fence boards through this and they had paint on them, which was a rubberized paint, which tries to re-rubberize when it gets a lot of friction and heat to it, which will happen with these blades. Um, and so it re-rubberized and it sealed all up in there and that was why it was such a mess. So just a note for you, if you're going to uh, do fence panels or anything like that, make sure you're not um, working with an exterior paint that you're trying to plane off. If you can, try to sand that off first. Always wear a mask and goggles for that stuff. It can be potent. Uh, try to sandblast that stuff off if you can. And at that point, there's really no, no point in running it through the thickness planer unless you're just trying to obviously reduce the thickness on it and get it leveled. Um, other than that, they can cut through paint, but I wouldn't advise it.